third turn is to test. To test. Testing is you do, I help. Now to the kid, we say, you do, the child, I help. You do, I help. It's giving them, if you want to write this down, an opportunity to succeed or fail. It's putting them actually in it to have an opportunity to succeed or fail. And then the heat of the intensity of the experience brings the impurities to the top. This is the picture that Proverbs gives us on this issue. Proverbs 17.3 talks about a refiner's fire. The crucible for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tests, Hebrew word for discipline, the heart. The Lord tests the heart. God gives us, puts us out in the experience, and then the impurities rise to the top. Proverbs 27, 21, the crucible for silver and the furnace for gold, but man is tested by the praise he receives. A real good way to see if your kids are getting what you're trying to teach, train, and test, and transform them is to, let, is to see how they handle praise. How do they handle praise? Do they take the credit for it? Do they give it to someone else? How do they handle that? Proverbs 8, 10 says it this way, to choose my instruction. We got to give our kids a choice to do it themselves, to experience it. And it's funny, the, um, the refiner's fire thing, the, the biggest impurities don't come out until the heat's been going on for a long time. That's when the biggest impurities to make pure metal and to have it unmixed and be pure and have the impurities come out, it's the longest heat and the, the deepest impurities come out last. So they got to have opportunities to succeed or fail and to choose discipline for themselves. If in basketball, for example, if teaching is, you know, I do, you watch, and then training is we give them drills, I do, you help. Testing, you do, I help. It would be scrimmage. It would be a game. We actually look at that and watch the impurities come to the top. And it's the experience, the intensity of the experience that brings those to light to the top, to the surface. Um, my dad and mom did that with me. I taught in church, at a, I spoke a lot in church at a very young age. I helped uh, lead some little programs. It was just a little country church at a very young age. They helped me do that. So I try to do the same thing with my kids. Megan it was helping, was teaching um, an elementary age Sunday school class, helping teach an elementary age Sunday school class. I just went with her one day to help. I wanted to see it. I wanted to see what was going on there. Um, I, I, I try to put my kids in situations because I, what's been passed down, the philosophy has been passed down in my uh, lineage is your job as a parent is to get yourself out of a job. Your job as a parent is to get yourself out of a job. So my vision, like for Christian schools and schools of all kinds, is to have the kids be the ones doing the concession stands, teach, train, test. Have the kids be doing the prayers. Have the kids be singing the national anthem. Have the kids learn about the business of the ticket sales and implement the kids and let them succeed or fail, all in the form of the complete track of discipline. The testing and then the transforming. My uh, dad, mom did it with me. You know, they did it with me and now I, I, I do it with my kids. In the auction world, it was kind of like this. My dad would have me auction. My dad had me auction when I was 18. Uh, that's when you could get your license and then he would like put me in that fire and he would help me. And my grandfather would do that too. And I was auctioning a curio cabinet in Butler, Indiana, out on the front lawn on the main drag through there. And I'll never forget this. I was going, $100, $150, anybody else? And my grandfather just about reaches, oh, he just about chokes me, grabs this, wait, why, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to sell it. For $100? Yeah. No. I said, why? He said, can you think of something about this cabinet that you would tell them that would make it bring more? I said, well, I noticed that the wood feet are really uniquely carved. It's very unique down there. I've really never seen one like it. He goes, don't tell me, tell them. So I tell them. 150, 200, 250, 300, 350. Anybody else? Sweet! I said, what? 
stop, are you going to sell it for that? I go, well, I, I was. Is there anything else you could tell them about it? I said, well, the bevel glass, it's really beautiful. I've never seen bevel glass like that. Probably they don't probably make that like that anymore. I, I, I bet it was really expensive to do that. He goes, don't tell me, tell them. So I tell them, 400, 450, 500, 550, 600, $650, anybody else? Wait, wait, stop, stop. I said, what? He goes, can you think of something else? I said, well, the hand carved wood all around it is really gorgeous. And then it was refinished. I mean, he goes, don't tell me, tell them. I tell him, 850, 900, 950, 1,000. Can I sell it now? <laughs> yeah. Sold $1,000. What I was going to sell for $100 brought 1,000. But because in the testing process, I learned. And, and in the heat of the intensity of the experience, the impurities came to top came to the top, and I was able to be tested there in a way that was meaningful to the discipline and the discipleship in my life. And you know, on the way up, what I didn't tell you as I was auctioning that he told me, he said, Mitchell, if I can get you convinced, I can get them convinced. God is saying to you as a parent, if I can get you convinced, I can get your child convinced to be a disciple of Christ. You do, I help. Lily now takes me through this, and I help her. She leads the way. She decides we're going to do it. That's really kind of cool. You know, Jesus did that. In the heat of the intensity in Luke 10 of sending out his disciples to do it, he helped them. 